soil is going to give you Chardonnay, then you don't want to try growing Cabernet. Amen. Right? You got to work with what you've been given. Work with what is, is kind of pronounced on, on, on the property. Todd Fisher of Tarpey's Roadhouse. Correct. The most popular chef in all of Monterey. <laughs> I've seen it in the papers. You're the guy. I ate at your restaurant last night. Yes, Loved thank it. you. What a great menu. Appreciate Fabulous. it very much. And I know you're going to make something fun for us, so why don't you tell us what you're going to do? Well, we're going to do a whole roasted striped bass. It's local striped bass from here in the Monterey Bay area, Pacific Ocean area. Uh, we're going to do it in the Vesuvio oven, which is this bad boy behind us. This thing is gorgeous. Um, and that's, I think, a, 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 often the misconception with the wood-burning ovens is that they're pizza ovens. And they're not. They're wood-burning ovens. Exactly. And so there's, you can do a lot of things. In it. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to take and actually just run a blade right through our bass. Just kind of, and trying to cut into it without getting too far into the bone. Just kind of breaking the skin yeah. and into the flesh. It's exactly. kind of like scoring a loaf of bread. Exactly. And it's going to give us the ability also to get some flavor in there. So yeah. we're going to flip our board over so we don't have the fish on there. We're going to take a couple of cloves of garlic and really just smash those. Great. And start to chop that and make a bit of a paste. We're going to do that. We're going to do a little bit of scallion or green onion. Sweet. And so we're going to almost do like kind of a little slot of verde with a little capers some now and capers there. capers flavor, yeah. okay. So we're do a little bit of oil right into it and a little bit of salt. Wow. That'll help create kind of our some paste. Serious salt, yeah. And, but you need the salt to get the, to bring yeah, out the flavor. You got the caper in there. And the other thing it's going to do, it's actually going to draw out some of the moisture content of the onion and the garlic so that it'll start kind of, again, flavoring the, the fish for us. So you can see I'm just going to kind of push some of that down into those scores that we made. Do uh, you have relationships with your vendors? And do you know where it's coming from and who we this is? We do. I mean, this, this literally came from, from uh, Sal, my fisherman, who went out uh, and, and I kind of told him what I needed. I needed whole fish. And he, he literally called me. He goes, Chef, I got, this is what I got. This is what's I did, happening. I didn't, get, I didn't get any bites on any red snapper or any, uh, any cod, anything smaller. you, you got to work with what you've been given. Work with what is, is kind of pronounced on, 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 the, on the property. And what nature's providing. And so I'm just going to take yeah. one scallion to throw right in the center, just so we're kind of perfuming that, cal that cavity. Um, you know, that's where all the, that's where the guts were. So you want to make sure you don't leave that to be in there and get a little extra flavor in there. We love these Lodge cast yeah. iron pans. We're, we're, so thankful we're using they, them all throughout the, the uh, expo. Yeah, so and, it, and I love more, this giant one. A little more oil into the pan, and you can see already it's it's, it's, it's starting to get to that. smoking up a yeah. little, yeah. Because that, that pan is hot. <laughs> and set that in there. Nice. And again, the way we even go this way, so we get a little. Even better. Yeah. And then we're going to start that in the oven. By the way, this fish, I'm looking at the eyes of this fish, pretty clear-eyed fish. Exactly. This must have been just caught recently. Just huh? came in uh, this morning. I actually waited before I came down for the fish to come in. So we're going to slide that. And I apologize for my head being there. And we're really going to slide it all the way to the back, right where we've got where, the fire where built. Where the heat is, yeah. So I just, I should, before we got started, I shot the temperature of the oven, and it was about 950 off the wall. Wow. And about 680 off of the deck. the deck. So meanwhile, we're going to take a few grape tomatoes, as well as some Castle of Estrano olive, that's a California olive, and some, some marble potatoes, some little, some little marble potatoes. That's kind of our, the next addition to our recipe. As well as I pulled some green tomatoes right out of our garden. Nice. I, I, kinda, I love the concept of using the ripe, vine ripe tomatoes as well as vine unripe tomatoes. So, so, so what are you gonna do with all these? Well, units? I'm gonna check on the fish for a second because I hear it. out of the oven. So you can see how the fish is actually starting to blister on the, that outside there. You can see how the skin is kind of tightening up and around the, the spine, the, the, the spikes on top. I mean, that is that is one bad looking mamma jamma right there. So now that I've got, I brought the heat back up while we're after showing it, I'm gonna pull it back out. Potatoes? We'll go with the potatoes. So these are first. like little new potatoes? Yeah, they are. They're little, they're little um, what we call marble potatoes. Okay. So the... We got those in there. We're gonna go with a little bit of the Castel Levestrano olives. Castel Levestrano yeah. olives. A little bit of those, those grape cherry tomatoes. Okay, we've got some green tomatoes. Yeah, so we're gonna just put those in as well. And what's nice about this, sometimes when I use the green tomatoes, I'll put them in after the fact to keep their texture. In this particular case, I think we're gonna get, they're gonna burst and, and kind of be a nice, again, they'll, they'll kind of, they'll flavor, they'll add a little moisture, it'll be a magnificent treat. And they'll throw a totally contrasting flavor to the other ripe tomatoes. Exactly. So we're going with a little bit of the capers. Some more capers. Because no one ever said there was enough olive oil. Right. Ever. A little more olive oil. Beautiful. 
And now we'll put that back in. Let it let it turn its back on us. And slide it right back in to the, to the base of that fire. What else would you serve with this meal? Well, you've, you've really got everything in there. I mean, you don't need uh, to add anything in particular. You've already got your, your, your starch and your potatoes. You've got your vegetable, if you will, right. and the, the tomato. We talked about doing some roasted artichokes along with it, which would have been nice. Yeah. Again, a local ingredient for us. The other thing that would be nice, this is a nice bowl of greens, a little bit of lemon and olive oil. Yeah. Something simple, just because you've got so much flavor in that pan. So, so we're just about ready to pull. Wow. We'll give it, a, we'll give it another half of, you know, a couple of minutes. But you can hear all those ingredients, you can hear the tomatoes literally sizzling on the pan. The capers are kind of starting to burst with flavor, so we're pretty close. So this looks magnificent. You can see, you can see how the the tomatoes have, have kind of blistered in there. The yeah. potatoes are toasted and, and, and got a nice roasty flavor to them. The fish is absolutely magnificent looking. Do you have to, do you need to leave it there for any kind of carryover cooking or do wanna, you like to deal probably, with it? We probably want to give it a, a couple of minutes. Also, just, just the, the pan is so incredibly hot right now. Now it's, it's still clinging to the bones. Just like when you smoke ribs or, or anything like that, it's really the, the, the muscles tight because it's in a hot oven. Um, and so it's kind of clinging to the bones as it rests, it'll be ready to, it'll kind of relax and fall off, fall the, off, the, off the bones. Uh -huh. yeah. The only thing we really didn't do there is, is, is pepper the vegetables. And so I'm gonna go with a little bit of cracked pepper over it now. And doing it on, at the on, end on the instead vegetables. of early, yeah. Yeah, and so it doesn't become the overwhelming flavor. On this back side here, you can actually see, because of the scores we put into it, you can actually see where the fish is cooked through. And so again, now we're just gonna kind of take the, the knife right along the, the, the bone there. Following the spine. Yep, almost like you would when you're filleting it. Uh huh. Kind of coming and in can like you that. tell as you're cutting, can you feel the doneness of it? Yeah, it feels like there might be a, a, still a little bit of medium rare in there, which I'm, again, I'm okay with. I'm looking for a little bit of that Cause, opaque. Because if you had to, you could eat this raw and be okay. Exactly. You know, one of the nice pieces to the puzzle is that it's not overcooked. It's still kind of moist. Um, obviously, this backside here, as we come off. And what, do you, what do you call this dish? This is just a the uh, whole roasted striped bass with the... Uh, Grape tomatoes, new potatoes, and Castle Shana olives. What we'll do is we'll let we'll let Chef Todd do some uh, you know, pull some portions out for people to try, yeah. and um, and then we're gonna let you have it. Chef Todd Fisher from the from Tarpey's Roadhouse in Monterey, California, the most popular chef in Monterey. <laughs> I read that. That's true. I didn't make that up. Thanks, Chef. Thank you.